Hello and welcome to the Public Affairs Seminar for the 2022 North Carolina Wing Virtual Conference. While this is a pre-recorded session, Lieutenant Colonel Albert and I are monitoring the chat and we will be responding to comments or questions that you might have um, for the duration of this um, seminar. Public Affairs, more than just pictures. Beyond the lens. Are you assigned as a public affairs officer in your squadron? Do you maybe help admin a Facebook page? Do you type photos and submit them to your squadron PAO? Then this is your session. I've heard many myths about public affairs. It's just taking pictures. It's not really necessary. You have to be a pro photographer or journalist to do it. I'm not either of those. You need a good camera. It's just writing. Can you think of more? Post them in the chat. What is public affairs? Public affairs is governed by CAP regulation 190-1. It says the mission of the CAP PA program is to inform internal and external audiences of CAP's national importance, safeguard the image and assets of the corporation, and strengthen relations with key audiences and customers, which enables the organization to grow. Who is responsible for public affairs? Again, 190-1. Each unit commander will appoint a qualified individual to be the PAO. In the absence of an assigned PAO, the unit commander is responsible for the duties of the PAO. If the unit commander acts as the unit's PAO for six months, then he or she is assigned as the PAO according to current personnel procedures and they are required to enroll in the Public Affairs Officer Specialty Track. <clears throat> Who is the official spokesperson for your squadron? That's outlined in CAPR 190-1 as well, duties and responsibilities. The PAO is supervised by the commander. The commander and the PAO, as the commander's delegates, are the official spokespersons for the unit. No one else is. So practically, if you have somebody <coughs> that comes to your unit, <coughs> a journalist comes to your unit and would like to talk to somebody about your squadron and CAP, you should be referring them. They should be referred to the public affairs officer and or the commander. And the PAO should actually be getting hold of the commander and letting the commander know that this person wants to talk. The higher headquarters of public affairs officers serve as advisors, mentors, and resources for the development and the implementation of an effective PA program. Tips. Train other members in your squadron to take photographs, etc. That is supported by 2.4. Consistently communicate the CAP brand identity and inspire every member to help build awareness of CAP. So it's not just our job as public affairs officers to go take photographs, but other people can do it too and um, they can get them through to us. You can then share them on your social media channels, um, use them on websites, etc. You see, as a public affairs officer, practically, you're not likely to be able to support absolutely everything your squadron does. So if you can't be there, you can encourage others to take photographs and get them through to you together with some information about the activity. I mean, some of the some of the greatest photographs are some of these um, flying selfies that our aircrew takes, um, or that the pilots or the cadets to, um, on Cadet Oride takes, and you see um, the joyous faces of cadets flying um, in a Cap Cessna. Who approves communications? All PA communications, news releases, public websites, articles, photos, etc have to be approved by the commander, written in AP style. 
Official CAP correspondents must follow the guidelines in CAPP 1-2. And practically, this means that before you send an article for either to um, external media, um, such as your local newspaper, or you send it um, for publication on the WING website, or um, CAP News, it has to be approved by your commander. And um, I will ask the public affairs officers if they have commander's approval before publishing an article on the WING website. What can I cover as a PAO? While we're trying to get the word out about CAP, part of what we do is document our present. Our present becomes our history. Thus, we document what at times might seem rather mundane. Great examples include weekly squadron meetings, cadet orientation rides, weekend activities. There are tons more. Let's see your ideas in the chat. Getting published by external media. What will local media publish? Almost anything. Consider OPSEC and appropriateness. Consider your audience. Is your audience internal or external? Because you'll write differently for CAP than you will for like your local RAG. I've taken to writing several different versions of releases for my local squadron based on who that audience will be. Uh, my local EAA chapter, for example, is a very different audience to the local community newspapers. Local media are more likely to publish articles that have a local bent to them. You're li more likely to get something in if you are mentioning something that happened in that area or some of the members um, live in the area. And so um, personally, <clears throat> our, my home squadron um, covers an, a fairly large geographic area, three or four counties, in fact. And so what I will do is um, I will use quotes from members who live in the different counties um, for depending on which uh, media outlet I'm sending the article to. And I have a better hit rate like that um, of what actually they will publish. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Solomon, who is the National Public Affairs Officer, provided a great summary of the basics required in a release to the media in a PAO Academy. So these are the things that your release should answer. Who, what, when, where, and why. These are slides from his um, presentation. Who? Who is announcing the news? That's probably you. What? What is being announced? A promotion? A change of command? A SARX? What is it? When? The time should include an AM or a PM and it should have a date and make certain the day and date correspond. Where? Where did this happen or where will it be held? And why? This is your key message. It is the why that is ma the making of the news. <clears throat> a picture is worth a thousand words. You should include at least one good quality photo, maybe more, so that they have a selection to choose from. Action shots are preferable to posed photos. The higher the resolution, the better. How do I get quotes? How do you get people in your CAP squadrons to, um, how, how, do you, how do you get something usable out of them that you can put in your article? Practically, I have discovered that um, what I do is I take notes from people when they're talking and I then verify accuracy with them before I'll go to publication with something just to confirm 100% that I understood what they were saying, that I got it down accurately. Or um, if I have a laptop or another device on me, I'll take it to members while the activity is in process and I will ask them to provide me with a short quote. Um, I also get them to include their name and grade because sometimes they might be from another squadron and I might not know them that well. Um, and that way I have a better chance of actually 
being accurate as to who they were. And we do have to be accurate in what we say. Email or call members after the activity and ask them for a quote and tell them why. Usually the more enthusiastic attendees will reply and you'll get a quote. Um, quotes don't need to be long. You know, um, sometimes they can be a couple of words, sometimes a couple of lines, sometimes maybe a paragraph, but you, it's not like you are asking them to write, you know, a novel. You're just literally asking for a quote. Always reserve the right to edit or not publish something if it's inappropriate. Now for social media. What is social media? Social media is a very important part of what we do now. Merriam-Webster de defines social media as forms of electronic communication, such as websites for social networking and microblogging, through which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other content such as videos. Social media goals. The primary goal of every CAP social media channel is to raise awareness of CAP activities and members that positively reflect our core values of integrity, volunteer service, excellence, and respect. Who are administrators? Admins are anyone with access to an official CAP account on any social media channel. They have to be authorized by CAP and be under the guidance of a PAO. Reporting of every channel, which is defined as a, an internet operation, and annual approval is required by the wing commander. All channels must have at least two active CAP senior members with admin and password access. If either of them leave, your unit or the organization, then you should delete them from the channel and you need to find somebody else to help you manage it. OK, some highlights with this. It means you cannot, cadets cannot be used as admins on our social media channels. That's a CAP regulation. Um, you also cannot use parents of cadets who are not CAP members to help you admin the accounts. They have to be a member and they have to be a senior member. CAP social media channels. What does CAP actually use? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. The first four are used at national, region, wing, and unit level. LinkedIn is used at national level only. Now, in North Carolina, we encourage the use of Facebook, our wing commander will not authorize the use of any other channels. Also be aware, we're only permitted one channel per unit. We are not permitted to have multiple pages for any squadron, group or wing. Um, only multiple pages are permitted at um, national level. <clears throat> so you will also see that uh, a few years ago, our wing had several Facebook pages. There was um, a, an encampment page, there was a ranger training page, there was cadet programs page, etc. And those have all been shut down. We have consolidated everything onto one page. Channels have to be public, they cannot be private, they cannot be secret. And security, you have to change passwords quarterly and activate two-step authentication. Usernames. The usernames of all social media channels for a local unit should be the same across all channels and also match your website's address if you have one. Social media channels need to be updated regularly to main effective communication tools and posting should be frequent. Really, if you're posting once every six months, okay, that's not enough. Um, regular posting would be at least once a week, a couple of times a week, more frequently even. Um, and it's not that difficult to find stuff to post about. There's weekly meetings, um, activities that you might do, things that you that your squadron celebrates or that members celebrate. There are so many things that you can find to share, um, and um, or you can share off the wing page or other squadron pages, and or the national pages. Branding. 
be sure to spell out Civil Air Patrol at least once in any posts you make. It may take some practice to break the acronym habit. You should please use proper cap, rank and grade abbreviations. While it's OK to simply use cadet blogs, for example, um, referring to a member just as Joe blogs without their cap, rank or grade is a no, no. You must be using it. Um, preferably, you should also be saying um, what role they play in, in whatever it is you're posting about. So, for example, <clears throat> if you are posting a photograph of an aircrew that is training, you would identify the mission pilot, say Captain Joe Soap, mission observer, and the mission scanner or airborne photographer, etc., and see who identify the different roles that those people played. Hashtags. Hashtag Civil Air Patrol, Go Fly Cap, Cap Cadet, Cap NC21. <clears throat> Cap mission, cap exercise, total force, and we've seen other hashtags in use like cap cyber and hashtags for each of the annual cyber patriot competitions. Social media dues for local units. <clears throat> be a good listener, be positive, be encouraging. Show gratitude to the, towards those who promote Civil Air Patrol. Support other organizations and individuals who align with CAP. Support people contributing to their community. Build an audience by following people who might also support Civil Air Patrol, like members and friends of members. Start and maintain conversations. Shares on Facebook and retweets on Twitter are endorsements whether you intend them to be or not, and they're seen as a reflection of Civil Air Patrol's values and priorities. So be mindful of implied Air Force endorsements when soliciting donations and conducting fundraising activities on official social media channels. Social media don'ts. Don't talk politics, religion or sports. Don't be snarky. Don't post someone else's material without getting their permission. Don't indulge in debates on official CAP um, social media channels. Photography. What is the best camera? <clears throat> Actually, the best camera is the one you have on you at the time you need to take the photograph. And it will depend on what you're taking photographs of. What is your subject? So today, for example, we have a team screenshotting conference. By the way, thank you all team. We're keeping pace with an ever-changing environment and we need to be cognizant of that. Um, so screenshotting itself has become a new art form. Be prepared, be a prepared public affairs officer. Carry your camera with you to cap activities. Goes without saying. Personally, I take my good camera most places with me. And I do that because <laughs> so many of my best photographs have usually come from unexpected opportunities um, and that have literally come up in a snap. So um, carry your camera with you. Things to be aware of. Images posted on social media channels don't usually need to be high resolution, whereas those used in print media do. <clears throat> While most modern cell phones take high res images, the phone often reduces the size of the image when it is sending to save on data. And the recipient then receives a far smaller file, which is often unusable for print media. And I may say this because um, we are often called on um, as the wing PAOs to send images to national. Um, also, um, I personally send images through to media when I put article, when I submit articles and um, we are actually specifically told with with national that they need something of minimum resolution. And a lot of the cell phone images that we've been getting from missions, for example, 
unfortunately, just are not high enough resolution to submit, um, which is really quite sad um, because some of them are actually really nice photos. Um, now, a message from National for you. Um, this is from Rick Pallister, who is the Deputy Chief of Marketing and Strategic Communications, and he joined CAP close to the end of 2021. Um, he says that we have a number of great projects lined up for this year. And a few things that I might want to highlight to the, to the North Carolina Wing Public Affairs Officers. CAP Brand Portal has great information on logo use, colors, style, and templates. Now this um, CAP Brand Portal also has templates um, for um, back screen backgrounds, for um, virtual meetings, um, it has um, <clears throat> stuff for PowerPoint presentations. It has a new um, has a, a new. It has all sorts of new ready to use documentation that um, you can use. It says um, he says also a group has been working on a branded open house kit that will be available widely soon, and they have big plans for other materials in the future. We've assembled a fabulous digital engagement team with members of the national volunteer staff alongside a few of us on the national staff to enhance and improve the website and growth of social media channels. There will be more information coming on this one. Continue to forward content to us for inclusion in props and social media. We look forward to getting lots more great photography from the units. 2022. What's in the works for the public affairs officers in C Wing? We're looking at providing more online training for you. Um, we are hoping to have a couple more workshops for you this year and um, to assist public affairs officers in obtaining their specialty tracks. It's very important to us. Thank you. Thank you, Wing public affairs officers for all you do to help us share Civil Air Patrol news, taking photos and winning Facebook and writing articles. And thank you too, to those of you who help them do that. Um, a shout out to our screenshotting team who are busy with today's um, virtual conference. And a special thank you to Lieutenant Colonel Albert, who's the um, North Carolina Assistant Wing Public Affairs Officer who's with me here today monitoring and responding to the chat in the channel. And also a really wonderful support and mentor to me. Thank you, Captain Green, for the editing of this PowerPoint presentation so that um, all of you watching this um, could see an error free and uh, better looking product. I hope you had a great time and um, we are now looking forward to taking any questions that you might have.
here on Neptune. Where are you guys from? <laughs> uh, we actually live in Maryland at the moment. Do you? Yeah. Originally from South Africa. Oh, nice. This is absolutely amazing. Uh -huh. so, this is quite a change in scenery from South Africa. I was going to say, I'd probably say the same if I went to South Africa. I don't know why that's somewhere I always wanted to go. Even when I was yeah. a kid, for some reason. I don't know if it's just the name South Africa. <laughs> How old are most of your dogs? Uh, this team varies from like seven. Yeah. Yes. Down to two and a half years old. Yeah. Ah, hey. Good dogs. Good dogs. Go ahead. Go ahead, Neptune. Get them out, Nep. Neptune, get them out. Go ahead. Here, I got an idea for a change. <laughs> um, 